All right, final segment tonight of Soccer Matters here on ESPN 97.5. And by the way, uh, a big hello to those on 92.5 all the way down to Beaumont, Texas. What a way to finish tonight. Um, no question, one of the greatest careers in U.S. men's national team history and European club history. He is DeMarcus Beasley, a former Houston Dynamo, joins us now. DeMarcus, thank you so much for coming on the show. Ah, no problem, Liz. It's always good to see you, my man. This is great. You know, you and me were laughing in a minute ago. I said, you're an easier guy to get for an interview <laughs> post-playing career than you are during your playing career. <laughs> that is very, very true. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't, everyone knows I didn't do too many uh, interviews uh, when I was playing. I think this is the most I've spoken and or done interviews in my whole life. <laughs> but you know what, to be honest, to be honest, I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. You know, um, I don't know why I didn't do it sooner. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, you have a great engaging personality. So, you know, that's why people wanted to get you not only obviously for your playing career, but, you know, in my case, it was like, man, yeah, come on, this guy's seen it all. He's done it all. These are the people you want to interview, right? I mean, you know, you get some 18 or 19 year old rookie, you know, you have a hard time getting them to say their name, you know? So, uh, you're always desired. Well, listen, I'm glad you're on the show and, and I've been enjoying uh, listening to you doing other things. All right. So just position this World Cup team for me and this young group. And I kind of compare it to 2002 with you and Landon and that group that broke onto the stage. Kind of compare the two. Uh, I mean, I, I think they're completely different, to be honest. Um, you know, we had and the one glaring uh, factor was we had a lot of veterans in that team. Um, you know, Landon and I were, were, only, were the only two young guns. Yes, we had some players that hadn't played in the World Cup before. That can, is comparable. But as far as um, the personnel that was on the field in 2002 compared to hopefully who will be on the field in 2022 in Qatar, uh, it's, it's totally different. Um, you know, you, you look at the, the names that we had then and, and now, uh, you know, our core group is 22 and under. I mean, that's, that's pretty remarkable, you know, um, that's, that's, I think that shows a little bit of, um, the, the strides that we've taken, um, from, from then, uh, I know we had a, a blip, obviously, at, well, I can't say blip, a very big blip in 2018, but, um, you look at this, you look at this squad, uh, and they're hungry, they're, they, they have no fear, they go out and, 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 and try to perform it to the best of their ability and try to, you know, not, um, let the criticism get get to them and, and kind of you know harm their their culture and their group of the national team. Um, but yeah, I think there's uh, there isn't too many different uh, uh, similarities with the 2002 group and 2022. This is a group I think America could fall in love with in a World Cup. Um, there, there, there seems to be a focus from young guys and maturity. Maybe that has to do with the clubs they're playing on in Europe. Maybe you can comment on that. Yeah, I think so. I think they understand now that I, now that we are seeing a, a more mature national team, um, I think they they get it. Yes, they're very talented. They're good players. We, we've said great things about them in the past. But the the, the thing that they were missing um, in the beginning of this of their short national team career was what it meant to play for the national team. What it really means to wear the badge and and have that that crest and that flag on your, on your heart. Um, yeah, they played hard. Um, they wanted to win for, for the country, but to go out there and show it every single time you go out to step on the field, it takes time, you know, and they were all young. They didn't quite know how to, how to, to handle that from taking, you know, going to these big clubs and then coming back to playing for your national team. It's different. You know, it's, it's not, it's not the same. Um, so it's a different motivation. Um, I think with playing for your country, and you can ask anybody uh, that that plays uh, internationally. Yeah, it's just it's just different, and it's not a good difference, not a bad difference. It's just it's just different. Uh, but I think now that they've grasped that that feeling and that 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 whole idea of what it means to play for a national team, uh, you see it in their performances. You see it in their you know their greediness to to grind out results when when football sometimes is not pretty. You know, you see it in their performances and their, their tackling and their togetherness, the culture that they're trying to build. And, I, you know, Greg Barhart was a big, a big part of that. So I think that is the, the, the part where 
you know, us now I said me as a, as a fan can get really get behind this team and support the team because, you know, they know what it means to play for the United States and how much this means, not only for them, but for us as well. You know, we, yeah, of course, we want to see beautiful football. We want to see them playing the style that Greg likes and really fluid and attack minded and, you know, uh, counter pressing and all those things. But sometimes it's not going to work, you know, but if we can still have that mentality that even at the 89th minute, if we're down or we're, you know, tied nil nil, we can still get a goal. We can still push on and, 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 and get a result. And I think that mentality is starting to creep into the national team now. Yeah, every game's not going to be 5-1 like in Panama, but that was a great uplifting yeah, exactly. uh, experience. We're talking to DeMarcus Beasley, what a career he's had at both uh, with the U.S. men's national team. And, yeah, i got to mention the Chicago Fire back in the day because uh, there was a lot going on there. I remember doing a lot of your games uh, in Chicago. All right, uh, let's talk about your former teammate, Greg Berhalter. He, he's obviously, his star, his star is shining right now with – especially I think going into this last round with all the absences due to injury, Dest and uh, Aronson, and of course, Weston McKinney. So, I I mean, you got to say he's pulling the strings beautifully here and he's got a very, very focused and intensely uh, loyal to each other group. Yeah, I 100% agree with that. Um, You have to give him credit. We did not qualify to 2018. His job was to get this group, young group. I mean, we can say whatever you want to say, Excuse me, the clubs that they play at the high level, the Champions League with, with Christian winning the Champions League, Weston playing well at Juventus. That's one thing. But getting the, that team to qualify for the World Cup was the main goal. And they are on the brink of doing that. So you have to give credit to, to Greg Burhold. Yes, he's not going to be everyone's cup of tea. But, you know, uh, I think that what he's done with this group and it's kind of a short short period of time uh, is, is phenomenal. Uh, to be able to, you know, have these players, their mentality to go out and, 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 and win and, and to grind and to fight um, and get us back to, uh, in, into a World Cup. Uh, we all know it's not, it's not easy to qualify in CONCACAF, you know. Uh, I'm not going to say, you know, um, the differences or, you know, what it takes or what, it, what it's like in a, in, in, in away games and this and that, it's, you know, it doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is that we're one step away from qualifying for the World Cup. So, you know, uh, and we've been playing better as of late. And I think that a lot of that goes to him, his, his, his player selection, um, the, the mentality he has uh, given to the players and the confidence that he gives to these players to go out and show your talent, go out and play, you know, the way you know how to play in our system in the American way. I think that's as beautiful to see. And I'm, I'm very happy for, for Greg and his coaching staff that, you know, we're one, one step closer uh, to qualify for the World Cup. He's DeMarcus Beasley. All right. So ta- let's talk a little bit about Christian Pulisic's hat trick, that performance. Is that kind of a watershed moment you think for him? I mean, that's the way everybody's positioning it in the media. Yeah. I mean, you, you look at some of the, 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 like the last, the last window, didn't play as well. Uh, first game against Mexico, didn't play as well. Um, you know, uh, but the effort was there. You know, the effort was there. He was getting in those positions uh, to, to score, to, to help his team uh, get a result. Uh, just wasn't wasn't happening. Uh, and you expected, you know, as fans, I, and I, I won't lie, I did too, you know, coming off the, the season or the, the, uh, the last couple of months that he's had for Chelsea, you would think he was coming in uh, flying against Mexico. He would have scored that chance and, you know, it just would have kept, you know, moving forward, but it didn't happen. And that's football. It happened, it happened, you know, but for him to come back and, you know, obviously given the armband uh, and come back in a big, big way against a must win match uh, against Panama at home and to score a hat trick. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, that, that shows that he is, he's a, he's a gamer. He's up for the task. Um, you know, the last goal he scored was <laughs> was crazy when he made the dude and, and slide it past the goalkeeper. So we all know that the talent that Christian that Christian is, and you know, hopefully he just keeps um, you know progressing and hope that um, you know his stand with Chelsea and uh, with, with the national team will you know will will continue. Uh, but yeah, we need him to you know be playing at a high level for us to um, you know get results. DeMarcus Beasley joining us and uh, had an outstanding co- career played at Rangers, Man City. It must have been a different Man City back when you were there. 
<laughs> Very different. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about that, because I talked to Earl Barrett, who's coaching locally here in Houston with the Rise, and he said the same thing. He goes, it, it was light years different than to what, what it is now. Yeah, I mean, it was, it, it is different. You know, I mean, just from what I see on TV and uh, obviously what, um, uh, you know, from even, even from like the, the infrastructure, you know, the stadium is a little, little bit bigger. Uh, you know, the train facility, I'm sure is, you know, amazing now, even uh, better than it was before. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it, it is different, obviously, with all the money that came in uh, after I left. Um, there's going to be some changes, you know, um, the, the personnel, the, how they play, the style, the coaching, and all those, all that stuff. I mean, this, this is a truly a world-class team and a world-class organization. But one thing I will say that is the same is the support. Even we were, I think, in my in my year, you can probably look this up. I think we finished either 14th or 15th in the in the Premier League that year. But whenever we played at home, it was still sold out. The support from the fans at Man City is was and still is phenomenal so that part has never changed they, they're going to support you when you're you know down fighting relegation if you're middle mid mid table or if you're you know fighting for the championship um you know they're going to be there um so the, the support that city gets um that has that that they have gotten you know throughout the years that's that, that's never that's never changed now i just see obviously on a, a more global a global stage or more global platform but the fan support was amazing when I was there. Um, you know, I always felt uh, connected with them uh, as well. And I think that's one thing for me that has stayed, you know, true is the support that City has always given their players and the club. Well, you no doubt were, were you were a pioneer. I mean, you were forging new grounds when it came to the clubs you played in Europe. And, you know, it was a lot more difficult for an American player to be getting the the, the opportunities and earning the opportunities you had. I mean, the indoctrination to their history, though, how long did that take when you got there, right? Because the histories of these teams are just remarkable how far back they go. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you do know uh, the history. And sometimes, it's, it's, to be honest, it's, it's, it's taught to you. You know, you're, you're, you, you learn the culture, you know, the players and the, the staff and even the fans that have been there before you. You know, you learn those different things as you go and you try to engulf yourself into, you know, where, where you are because, uh, you know, you, you want to, you know, understand Well, most players, I, I mean, I'm just speaking for myself, but for me, I wanted to always um, put myself and engulf myself in the club in the city that I was at, you know, that was trying to, you know, learn the culture and uh, uh, learn the football culture as well, uh, the history of the club. That was always something that was important to me. Um, there's always one thing to, you know, to go on, go on the field and, and play well and, and try to win, you know, the fans over that way as well. But, you know, there's another element to that. You know, I, I wanted to, you know, try English food <laughs> or British food and, you know, just, you know, be in a cafe and just sit and people watch and just see how, you know, things are and how people live. And, you know, I was never a, a sightsee guy. Like, I didn't really go to sites and see different things and take pictures. That wasn't really me. I just wanted to, you know, be, I want to get lost in the city and, um, you know, try to find my way back home. Um, you know, those things I, I enjoy doing. Uh, so, but yeah, once you're, when you're in a club that has so much history, uh, you can't help but to learn about it. And you can't help but to, you know, open your ears and, and listen to, you know, the, the people before you and the stories that they tell you about different players that came to the club and, you know, stories about, you know, pranks or stories about, you know, we had a, a fan that's been at the club or been watching the club for 60, 70, 60 years. Like, you know, you have a connection with that fan or with those fans because they've been to the club and you have to, you know, uh, you know, for one, show respect to that. But at the same time, you want to, you know, you want to be a part of that. So that, those, those things, I think, was always important for me in my career whenever I went to, to Europe and played for, uh, for a club. Now, look, uh, the clubs you played on, big name clubs, uh, along with that came a real pressure and a very different pressure than you ever got in Major League Soccer. Discuss that a little bit because that, uh, that had to have helped elevate and accelerate your player development too. Yeah, it did. It did. And, you know, to be honest, um, I, I can't. We can't, I can't say that unless I give respect to Chicago Fire because back then, um, you know, that team was built to win and uh, it was built to, you know, have, you know, tradition uh, and, 
you know, the players that, excuse me, the players that brought in, that, that they brought in at that time um, were winners. I mean, you look at, you know, the Novaks and the Stoichkovs and, you know, CJ Brown and Chris Armises and Zach Thornton, you know, all these, you know, Jesse Mars, Wolfie, you know, Josh Wolf. I mean, the list goes on, but, you know, we had, we put the pressure on ourselves to win every game. And the mentality that we had in the club was, you know, we wanted to win. So I think that helped me at a young age, you know, get to that point. It wasn't enough to, you know, to just make the playoffs. Um, and I know that sometimes mentality or sometimes it's being the mentality of MLS players that, you know, uh, they'll always be in MLS. There's no pressure because, you know, there's no relegation, there's no promotion. And it's like when you made, when you don't. That wasn't how it was in Chicago. So I think that helped me. That helped me on that helped me pressure with the, the pressure in uh, when I went to PSV. Obviously, it was a little bit heightened because it's a, it's a different story and um, a different club, and it, obviously, it's a bigger club. But I just think I can't say, you know, uh, that, you know, being able to handle the pressure came when I was in Europe. I think it started when I was in Chicago. You know, when, anyone can tell you, if you when you play on the same field as Deutsche Bank, there's, there's pressure. <laughs> Trust me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, there is pressure. There is, you know, he's yelling at you the whole time. But there you know, in, you don't run. But is isn't, that? doesn't, therein lies the beauty of you being on a team in, early in your career with a yes. guy like Stoichkov. And I've said that many of times. And yes, I'm really interested times. in what you said about the fact that internally you guys, look, you can glide through MLS. You know that. There's no consequence in July and August sometimes. You turn it on mm -hmm. the right time you get there. But it sounds like you guys as a group, and by the way, a bunch of these guys end up coaches, right? Wolf, yeah. Marsh, Zach, Thornton. But it sounds yeah. like you guys also, through the aid of your coach, Bob Bradley, were able to create this competitive cauldron uh, yeah, on your own then, that kept the, the bar high. Yes, we did. And, and, and I'm sure you've spoken to Bob and you've heard him, him speak, you know, uh, we always raised the bar, whether that was training, uh, you know, our, our uh, commitment, you know, uh, discipline on off the field, all those things was, was at a high level. And I mean, you look at, I remember, I remember one camp, um, uh, Bruce was the coach, then we had, I, I never, I think we had like nine players going to camp from one team. That's unbelievable. So already that mentality, it was, you know, myself, Zach, Chris Armis, Wolfie, Ante, uh, I think even Evan went in, Diego Gutierrez, we all went in at some, you know, one together from one team. That already is the, the culture that he's that you know was built in Chicago, is that you had winners, you had people that wanted to be at, at a different level, at a high level, because of you know they're playing for the country, you're, you're international, you know, so that and then mixed with the Europeans that we had with Storchkov and Lubos and, and Peter and and, those, and Dima and those guys that, that have played in Europe and know what pressure it is to win and, you know, to be successful every single day, every game, you know, I was in that culture at 17 years old. So whenever, whenever I speak about, whenever I talk about, um, you know, how, you know, deal with pressure, the mentality to win every game when you were at Rangers, especially when, when I was at uh, PSV, you know, I was like, no, 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 I, I learned that. I was in golf tonight in Chicago. You know, you look at the people that I was around, they wanted to win. That was it. Like, if, you know, I remember really quick. I remember the story. Um, Wolfie, uh, it was him. It was Josh Wolf. Uh, sorry, Josh Ante and, and, and Risto. And uh, there's a couple games that Wolfie didn't start, and he was starting. And, uh, and I went up to Wolfie, and I said, Wolfie, I was like, aren't you upset that you're not starting? Aren't you, like, mad? He's like, B, this is how it is. You know, I'm a 17-year-old. He's like, this is how it is. You know, if I don't score in one or two games, I'm going to be on the bench. So already that mentality, I just I remember that when I was 17, I'm 39 now. Yeah. I just remember that short little conversation, just how tough it is, you know, to play and to perform at every single day, you know, to get into a team to play, you know. Uh, so little things like that helped me along my way uh, when I started Chicago. Yeah, that's a great that's that's a great little piece there. You telling us about that because boy, those early influence me so much. Uh, look, we got one minute left, Demarcus. Quickly, tell me about Fort Wayne FC. I really love this. You're paying it forward in your hometown. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great, man. Uh, we're getting ready for our second season, um, you know, in, in USL2. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's really great to have a 
a club to, you know, that's kind of like a, a blank, blank sheet. You know, you kind of, um, you, you, you learn as you go, but at the same time, you try to put people around you that, you know, are smarter than you <laughs> and know a lot more than you uh, to make this work and to create something beautiful. That's what we're trying to do. Um, we want to give opportunities, you know, to, to, to kids and to, you know, inspire them to, if they want to be a professional soccer player, um, they can right in their hometown. Uh, and if not, we hope that we can inspire them in a different way. You know, uh, that's that's always the 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 uh, the idea uh, of what we're trying to build here. But yeah, I'm having a, I'm having a blast. I'm at the office now, <laughs> so uh, like I said, we start uh, in May. Uh, so just trying to get some pieces together before uh, the season starts. Demarcus, that's equally impressive to me that you're giving back to the game post uh, amazing playing career at both the national team level and the club level. This is a real quick one. Tricky bees or run DMB? Which do you like better? <laughs> um, oh man, that's tough. That's tough. They're both good. I'll, by the way, really, yeah, no, I know. Really I think they're quick, both good. I'll just, I'll just, I'll say tricky bees only because that was the first nickname I got. Uh, okay, I'll say that. I, I'll say tricky because that was I got that when I was what seventeen or eighteen, I think. Um, so yeah, I'll say that one because that was the first. All right, one. tricky bees it is. But I'll tell you what, there's nothing wrong with being connected to run DMC. Yeah, there's not. There's not. <laughs> my favorite rap. My favorite rap. I was going to say, yeah, the old school. Yeah, we know about run DMC. Yes, of course. Run DMC. Sure. All right, DeMarcus, this was fun. Thank you very much for coming on. No problem, Glenn. Good talking All right. to you. We'll talk to you soon. That was DeMarcus Beasley. Uh, we really appreciate him coming on tonight. All right, we're going to take a break here. Break is brought to you by Danish Inspirations Modern Contemporary Furniture. <laughs> 